So this is my talk, Multi-Site Do's and Don'ts, Best Friend or Worst Enemy. Um, and this is something that, for me, multi-site is sort of how I got started in, in WordPress. And what I always find is that either it's the best solution or it's the worst one, and potentially both at the same time. Um, so let's just dive into this. So uh, follow along on Twitter. We're using the hashtag multi-site. Tweet your photos at me. Um, also follow me, and there will be links to the slides uh, at that Twitter handle. So a little bit about me. I'm a technical product manager at WP Engine. I previously worked at Indeed.com as an interaction designer. Uh, I always like putting up my background because I have a BA in theater and dance. In fact, I'm probably standing in first position right now. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I like putting this up here because I didn't have a technical background to start. Uh, in fact, I started building WordPress websites for theater and dance companies. Um, and it's amazing to see how powerful WordPress is out of the box um, and what you can do with it. So even if you don't have a technical background, you can use WordPress multi-site. We'll talk through that. So these are a couple of brands that I've worked with that all use multi-site. Some big, some small, some you may know, some you may not know. Um, but these all use multi-site in some way. So a quick disclaimer. My advice is just based on my experience of what's worked. Um, every project's unique. No project fits in a box. Um, there's an exception to every rule I make up. Um, and uh, plugins will do everything I say multi-site should or wouldn't do. Um, so let's talk about what people are saying about multi-site. Because multi-site is kind of a hot topic right now. Everyone wants like, oh, multi-site, yeah, I want one of those. Do you? I tried to use multi-site to manage multiple sites, and I just got myself confused. Multi-site is amazing. Why would anyone not use it? Well, I feel that way some days. Multi-site's hard? Yes, this one. Yes. We had a project that was running a multi-site, and we converted it back to a standard WordPress install. This actually is something I hear a lot. Is, and we'll talk about why to use multi-site so that you're not un-multi-siting a multi-site. I don't use anything but multi-site. Uh, this used to be me. I'm sort of moving away from multi-sites. But it, if it fits the project, it's a good solution. So how is it being used? I really love this quote. I found it on Make Core. Uh, by JJJ. Multi-site is now a utility for managing multiple sites using one installation of WordPress, whereas the original version was to enable blogging networks. This is a really important point because what people want to do with multi-site is not what multi-site was built to do. Uh, two separate use cases here, and this is where you get yourself into trouble. So with my theater and dance background, um, I sort of think of Jekyll and Hyde when I talk about multi-site. Um, multi-site is your best friend or worst enemy, most likely at the same time. So let's just quickly cover what is a multi-site. We have a lot of non-technical people in the audience, and it seemed like not everyone knew what multi-site was, so we'll cover that. A multi-site network is a collection of sites that all one single instance of WordPress, one set of core files. Terminology is a really important part when you're talking about multi-sites. And so let's just cover what these terms are, and we'll all use them the same, and that way you know what I'm talking about. And in multi-sites are one installation of WordPress. A network is a multi-site network. It's a set of subsites that operate within that install of WordPress configured for multi-site. Uh, and then a site is one of the subsites inside of that multi-site network. Uh, one of the things, if you're running a non-multi-site website, guess what? You already have the code for multi-site on your server. It's the same version of WordPress you're using. You just configure it in a way to say, hey, WordPress, I want to create a network. Uh, so you are already using multi-site, maybe not actively, but it's on your server. So let's talk about what isn't a multi-site. A network of sites that can be moved to separate hosts. No. One host, one installation of WordPress, one set of core files, many sites. Go forth and profit. <laughs> it is not a set of sites that can be easily separated into their own WordPress installs. This is un-multi-siting, and it's not fun. Because serialized data. Who likes modifying serialized data? Not me. Um, there are plugins that do this, uh, or claim they do this. It sometimes works, most times doesn't. Um, I like to say, like, rather than un-multi-site a, a site, let's talk about 
if it should be a multi-site to start with. Let's save us the pain and uh, all of the work for later. It's not a set of sites that can have different IP addresses. Uh, so one off-tangent story here is I built a multi-site network for a rather large company and at the end of the project, like, delivered to spec and they're like, oh, by the way, um, we need all of these to have different IP addresses for a very specific reason. I was like, no, I can't do that. Multi-site doesn't do that. And they're like, oh, well, what do we do now? On multi-site, that was not fun. Over 200 installs. See the first point, yes. Multi-site lives on one host, one set of core files, cannot have a different IP address. So when I talk about multi-site, I sort of have to explain what it is. And I like the analogy of a multi-site apartment complex. Um, I'd like to live here. Uh, maybe some of us do live here. Um, so a multi-site network is like apartment complex. You've got a shared roof. This is your hosting. This is your server where your installation network just lives. It's like a shared roof of an apartment complex. One roof, lots of people living under it. Uh, you've got the common spaces. Um, you've got the lobby, you've got the hallways, you've got the elevators. This is your file system in WordPress. This is where things live and it's shared. We'll talk about that later. And then you've got private apartments. Uh, you have a, a, a door with a lock on it that only you can get in, the only trust that are there live inside that multi-site. Um, some things, be a good neighbor. No one likes bad neighbors. Don't trust strangers. Lock your apartment door. We'll all talk about a little bit more of what this means, but when you're on a multi-site network, you've got a single point of failure. You've got a single multi-site installation of WordPress. And if you've got a lot of under it, a bad noisy neighbor or a site that's getting hit by a DDoS attack or whatever is a single point of failure for you in the network. So the network admin, I think the funny thing is when I build multi-site networks for my customers and clients, the first thing they ask me is like, where do I log in? Um, and it, it's, it's not trivial. Uh, they're like, WP admin, like I don't see any of my settings. And I'm like, that's right, because there is the network admin, which is WP admin network. So you actually have two dashboards, the WP admin and you have the network admin. Two separate sets of functionality, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, so open or closed sites. When you're creating a multi-site network, there's like a fundamental question you have to ask yourself when you're setting up the multi-site. Is it open or is it closed? What does that mean? Uh, the funny thing is terminology is hard and even on make core, uh, when there's discussions about multi-site, no one uses the same language because it's confusing. What is open, what is closed, what's a public network, what's untrusted? Uh, so a public network, which is also called untrusted, an open site is where anyone can sign up for your multi-site and have a subsite in it. Um, some great examples, WordPress.com, giant multi-site. Uh, Happy Tables, one of my favorites. Blogs or restaurants, multi-site network. Uh, university student blogs, this is a popular use case for multi-site networks where you go and every student can have an EDU address that matches your college or school and you can go blog and rank to Google with your .edu address. Uh, but there's some concerns about a public, untrusted multi-site network. Uh, you've got file types and uploads. Like I said, it's a shared file system. So everyone's uploading everything to a s the single file system. That means if something malicious gets in there or say someone deletes everything, it's gone because it's a shared file system. Uh, scripts and embeds are another thing. Again. Single point of failure, someone embeds whatever script that they found on the internet, um, probably on the top of Stack Exchange, um, that's, I don't know, maybe a malicious script that who knows does whatever. Uh, one site on that multi-site network uses that. Maybe it's an admin in the network. Your site's compromised. Single point of failure. Other ones are copyright and DMCA requests. Uh, because it's an untrusted network and anyone can sign up for it, Anyone can post any content they want to it, and that content may not be theirs. Um, so something to consider is that you might be liable for some of the uh, content that gets posted on that network. So when you're deciding to choose a public network, think about it and really ask yourself why. Um, public networks are great and sometimes can be paid, 
WordPress.com is a great example. You can have a free site, and then you can pay to have added functionality. It's a great way to do income. Happy Tables is a paid multi-site network that is public, and anyone can sign up for it if you pay them. I don't know what their subscription fee is. Um, the other option is a private or trusted network. This is generally what I build. Um, this is a limited site and user creation. So not everyone can come and do this. It's only certain people that you create users for. Um, WordCamp.org is a great example. That's a multi-site network that's private. We all can't go and make a WordCamp.com or a WordCamp.org website. Only organizers of WordPress uh, meetups can actually do that. Uh, company intranets are, the, uh, are another great example. I've done this for many companies. Is build an internet or an intranet for them to have multi-sites where they control all of the content. It all lives in one place where they control it. But not everyone can come in and create organizations or whatever inside of that. Um, university networks are another really popular example of this. So you've got universities with colleges and schools and departments, and all of that content lives under one university. So it's a multi-site network. It makes great sense. Um, there's some concerns about a private network, though. Sometimes there's too many cooks. Um, too many people wanting to do too many things with your multi-site network. Again, it's one set of core files, and there's a lot of things shared there. And if one department admin's like, oh, I'm just going to change the CSS of this theme. Oh, by the way, that changed it on every site in the network that's using that theme. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, or the, the problem where there's no cooks at all. This is another one. It's like, hey, Taylor, uh, you made that multi-site network for us. Um, it keeps bugging me about updates. Like, do I need to do those? Yes. Yes, you do. It's a single point of failure. Why do WordPress sites get compromised? Because they're not updated. You need someone to do that, though, on a multi-site network. And that's a super admin. We'll talk about that, too. Um, and then, of course, code changes change the entire site. Uh, any site that's using a theme or a plugin, when you change that and you forget the closing uh, PHP tag and you white screen your site, yeah, that's the whole network. And when it's 500 sites, guess how many people are going to call you that, oh, my site's white screened. Oh, that was that uh, tag that I didn't close. Yeah, that was me. Sorry. 500 people. Um, so this is the, the main decision you have to make when you're creating a multi-site network. Is this a public or is this a private network? The next decision you have to make is, how do I want this to be set up? Subdomain, subfolders, domain mapping, this is all really confusing stuff. So let's walk through it. One primary network domain, mysite.com, site2.com, site3.mysite.com, one domain name that all of the sites live under. There's two flavors of this. There's the subdomain with the sites at the beginning. I prefer this one for SEO reasons, um, or subfolders, where the install name, or the, see, terminology's hard. Um, the subsite is appended to the URL. Um, one reason why I choose subdomains is if you're the first person to sign up for a multi-site network uh, site, and you choose, say, um, slash blog, guess who can't use slash blog? Every single other person in that network, because you've claimed that URL, and you're going to collide with mysite.com slash blog. So if I want to blog, it's going to be mysite.com slash blog slash blog. And no, no one wants that. Google doesn't want that. Um, so I generally go with a subdomain. Um, but what about other domains? Like, I, I want to have all of my domains mapped to this. Um, you can do that with multi-site. Uh, it's not quite out of the box. Uh, this is where we get into sunrise.php. Who knows and dreads sunrise.php? Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Stop using it. Start using Mercator. Um, it's a fantastic domain mapping plugin for, made by Human Made that is a replacement for the domain mapping that comes with multi-site. Um, highly suggest using this. It's the modern, efficient way to map domains to a multi-site network. Check it out. The guys over at Human Made are fantastic. I love this plugin. I use it on every single multi-site I work with. Um, there are also premium plugins that allow you to sell domains to your users. So this is really uh, popular with things like a public multi-site network is, hey, you come, pay me some money, you get a multi-site network, and then, hey, here's this plugin that will let you buy a domain name and auto-configure it so that I don't have to deal with it. Awesome. Uh, WPMUDev.org has one of these. I highly recommend that if that's something you want to do, a, a supplemental income stream for your multi-site network and allows you to do customization without having to set all of that up. 
Oh, this one. So, like I said, domain mapping's hard, and you know what's even harder is when you're mapping a ton of domains to a multi-site network, and use A records. A records are IP addresses. This is the second one. What's the problem with an IP address? On a multi-site network, you only have one of them, and guess what? Your host is going to change it, I promise. They're gonna tell you, no, we're not gonna change it. Yes, they will. And when they change it, and you're using A records, every single site that has DNS set up for it points to a static IP address that you're gonna have to go in and change. I had one customer that I built a site for, and I didn't control the DNS for it, but they did. And sure enough, we migrated their site, their, DNS, their uh, IP address changed, and they were like, why did none of the domains work? And I was like, where do you have those set up? Um, listed about 10 different registrars. This was over 200 multi-site uh, subsites in a network across 10 different registrars. Um, so had to hunt down the logins, had to go configure them. Of course, all of the admin interface pages are different, so it's not fast, it's not easy, and by the way, all of the sites are down right now. <laughs> so don't use A records or AAA records, which are IPv6 address equivalents of A records. Use C names. Any good host is gonna give you a C name with a domain that they control that they map that to your IP address and will change that whenever you migrate to a different IP address. And when you use a CNAME like this, any change to your IP address is completely transparent. You don't have to do anything. Yes. That one multi-site network gets a different IP address. Guess what I don't have to go do? Change 200 different DNS records across many different registrars. Please, please, please use CNAMEs. Unified site management. Um, I say this every time I give this presentation. I need to find this shirt. Um, super admins. This is someone above an admin. So we're all familiar with being an admin of a WordPress site. Super admins add a lot more uh, functionality for you to control a multi-site network. Uh, you can see all of the roles here. You can visit this URL. Essentially, I can add users, themes, plugins. I can manage the multi-site network in the network admin. Um, my administrators will get the access to their site's WP admin. Um, so super admin is also something that you don't give out a lot. Maybe you have one or two super admins. You don't let everyone be a super admin because that's too many cooks and you'll regret it because someone's going to not know what they're doing and it's going to mess up your multi-site network and guess how many sites are going to go down? Probably more than 200. Um, give super admin role privileges out very sparingly. Um, really powerful, use it with uh, caution. Shared users. This is probably the number one reason I get asked to build a multi-site network. Um, we, have, uh, we have all these different ideas for different sites and we only want people to register once. Yes, that is a perfect reason to use multi-site because they all share a centralized user. Um, when I create a new, ad or a new user, I assign them privileges and I say, you get access to these sites. Awesome. Guess what also happens is users log in once and have access to all the sites on the network. This is super efficient for our user to not have to log into different places. One thing to note, and this has burned me a lot, is you, shared users don't work well with two-factor auth plugins because two-factor auth plugins, to be secure like they're supposed to be, make you auth for every single subsite. Uh, so just know that that doesn't play well. You're going to log in for every single site. Things like Duo2, Google Auth, two-factor auth. Just know that if this is the reason you were building a multi-site network to share users for them to have a single place to log in, two-factor auth is not going to be an option for you. If you find a plugin that does this really well, let me know. Um, has anyone ever seen this? This surprised me the first time I visited these sites and I was logged into a certain site and magically that sort of looks like WordPress.com but I'm on CNN and I'm on TechCrunch but I'm on WordPress.com? Yes, because guess what? WordPress.com is a multi-site network, a huge multi-site network and when you're logged in to WordPress.com, you were logged into all of the sites on the network. Um, yeah, something you may didn't, didn't realize. User profiles are also the same for all of these. So you notice my photo here, it's the same for both of these websites. I have never subscribed or logged into these sites because 
I don't know, what, what I'd never needed to. It's just something to visit. I'm logged into WordPress.com. A single user profile and all of that is shared across that network. That poses a problem, though. Say you're using a multi-site network to build, um, say, an internationalized version of a site. And guess what? My author bio needs to be in French on the French site. Um, part of shared users is shared metadata about those users. And so my English bio is going to show up on every single bio page for every website in it, and it's going to be the same. Um, guess what? There's a plugin for that. Um, I just came across this one recently. It's really great. It allows you to have different profiles for different multi-site sites. Um, highly recommend that. There's that plugin thing. I promise they will do everything I say you shouldn't do with multi-site. Uh, shared themes. So this is another great reason for using a multi-site network is because you share themes. Um, you install a super admin, installs your theme on the network, and then it's available to all of the sites on the network to use. This is great for restricting all of the sites uh, to only select themes because Anyone can't come in and say, oh, I just downloaded this theme from wherever and I want to use it. No, because a super admin has to approve that. Um, you can uh, restrict themes available to only some sites. Um, but again, because it's shared, if I'm changing that theme for just whatever code changes I'm making, that is going to affect every single site on the network. If I'm going in there and like, oh, I'm just going to edit some styles in this theme, uh, because it doesn't quite line up. Guess what? You've just edited styles for the whole network that's using that theme. So beware of that. Is there a solution to that? There is. Child themes. Raise your hand if you use a child theme. The whole room should be raising your hand. Um, if you do not use a child theme, how are you going to update it? Because you've probably made customizations, and when you update that theme, you're going to lose all those customizations. And guess what? When it's customizations you've made for 200 different sites, you're going to be a really sad person. Um, so the I, recommendation I have is use this plugin uh, or build your own custom themes. And what you do is you have the, the single shared theme that you want. Um, that's your core theme. That's the parent theme. And then build child themes for every single site on the network. This plugin makes it really easy and will do that for you. Um, then customize those sub-themes. You can have per site customizations without affecting the parent theme. And guess what? You can still update your parent theme. Yes, because updates are good. Shared plugins. So just like themes, you can share plugins. One caveat here. A plugin that is activated on the network, that code runs on every single site, even if it's not activated for that site. Yeah, mm -hmm. all of those plugins that you're adding because, yeah, we love plugins. And oh, when you have 100 of them inside a multi-site network, guess who pays for that performance? Every single site in the multi-site network. Use plugins sparingly on multi-site networks. Only activate plugins that are needed for certain uh, sites. And hopefully, because the sites in your network are very similar, they're going to need the same plugins. And you're not one-offing or two-offing plugins for specific subsites. Uh, you can also do must-use plugins. This is really great. Um, this allows you to create a plugin that says has uh, custom post types in it or has whatever other customizations that you want run on every single site. Make it a must-use plugin. Can't be deactivated, doesn't have settings to be deactivated, and will run on every single site. This is really great. This is how most people who build networks force settings for the whole network, is you just build a must-use plugin. Um, Settings in two places. So this is one of my favorite uh, examples of this. So this is Yoast by, uh, SEO by Yoast. Um, notice there's two screens here. You're probably familiar with one of them. But guess what? When you're in a multi-site network, you have a whole other set of plugin settings that are where? Not in WP Admin, in your network admin. And guess who can access those? Only your super admins. So when your customer comes and says, you know, I'm not seeing WordPress or SEO by Yoast. Oh, that's because I didn't activate it for your subsite network. So go bug your super admin to go set up these settings. See how this gets a little complicated? Um, just know that when you have plugins, some of them have a second settings page, which you need to configure to be able to use it on a multi-site network. Guess what? Plugins don't all do this the same way. Um, this gets messy, and this is something that I would love to see multi-site core fix. Um, but something to think about, especially if you're a plugin author, is what do my settings look like in a multi-site network? 
So let's get into file structure differences. These are the differences between a single WordPress install and a multi-site install. You got some extra lines in your WP config, which WordPress will tell you. You've got some different HD access, which helps with mapping all of those things to a different directories. You've got the dreaded sunrise.php file if you're using domain mapping. Um, I'm not going to talk about these because you can Google it and you'll get the core or the codex page, which has great explanations of using this. Um, and then your WP content folder. It's a little different. It's got some subfolders. So here's what the file system looks like in comparison. Looks pretty similar until you get to that upload section. Um, and I will say, this confused me the first time I used multi-site. It was like, I have the date folders and the root of uploads, but then I have this sites thing. But that doesn't show up until I make more subsites. And then they're numbered. What is site three? I don't know. OK, let's go troll through the database. What site is that? Um, there's a great plugin, which oh, I should put that uh, URL here that will tell you what site three is. Um, but essentially what happens is every site in the multi-site network shares a file system. OK, that's a little scary, but they are sub-nested in subdirectories so that that content is segregated from the other content. Pro tip here, rely on a host that allows you to grant specific file uh, directory permissions to certain SFTP users. Because guess what, when you grant uh, the root to any SFTP user, guess what they have access to? Everything. All of the content on all of the sites, everywhere. And you can't just give them access to the upload folder because that has all of the content for everything else. Um, so look for a host that allows you to say, you, this SFTP user only has access to site number three. That way you can allow that file system access, but keep it safe and secure so that other people aren't editing other people's files. Database structure differences. This is the fun part of multi-site, and I probably, uh, you don't think that, but I do. Um, so here's normal WordPress, 10 tables. Uh, I've excluded one, we'll talk about that later. Um, multi-site, 10 original tables plus six more. Hmm, okay, blogs, the versions, the registration logs, the site meta, okay. That looks cool, yeah, 16 tables, I can do that. Ah. Uh, that just got complicated. So 16 tables plus eight more tables for every single site in the network. This does not scale easily. What does that look like? Tables in one multi-site database. One site, 24 tables. That's pretty reasonable. 10 sites, 96 tables, OK? Hmm. This, <laughs> this doesn't scale <laughs> very well. Um, anyone know what this last one is? WordPress.com, yes. This is of July 2015. 95 million subsites in a single multi-site network. Guess what? It's a multi-site network. No super customized stuff. It is a multi-site network. Why can you not do a whole bunch of things on WordPress.com? Because this. Because this right here, this is why you can't choose your own theme and your own plugins, because you can't scale that. Um, I'm not even going to try to read that large number. Um, lots of tables in a single database. This is where you get into database sharding, replication, uh, all of the really expensive things that you don't want to deal with. When you start scaling a multi-site network, just be ready for it, because this doesn't scale nice. This scares me. Like We're going to leave this slide. Um, <laughs> So that brings me to the next point, is you've got to choose the right hosting when you're doing a multi-site network. It is a single point of failure, and your hosting is critical here, because the last thing you want is 200 people calling you on a Saturday night when you're at dinner with your significant other, and your subsite of multi-site networks goes down. That has happened. Use a managed host. Please use a managed host. Um, I obviously work for WP Engine. We are a managed host. There are tons of other ones out there. Please use a managed host. Here's some pro tips for you. Things to look for in your hosting. Automatic backups with one-click restore. Cool, that's great. You need that. Um, but you need the ability to download those backups. Make sure this works with multi-site. Built-in staging sites also needs to work with multi-site. Granular deploy to production. Deploy only specific tables to your multi-site. Look for extra security features. Single point of failure, any extra security you can get is valuable. Use it. Known limitations. Some hosts don't support everything. Um, find one that supports the usage that you need for your multi-site network. Use version control. 
I won't even go into this one. Massive multi-site networks. This is where you get into uh, having 200,000, 200 million sites in a multi-site network. Um, spend a lot of money or hire someone to do this. Um, just know it's expensive and it's not fun. So let someone sit in a dark room and configure your multi-site. Predev do's. Define this, please. Define, disallow, file mods. This is that cool little thing in the admin where you log in and it's like edit theme or edit plugin and you get this cool little file thing that lets you edit PHP files inside of the admin. Not on a multi-site network, disable this because no. <laughs> Define do not upgrade global tables. This will save you if you have a super massive multi-site network, an MMS, what are I, uh, large sites disabled or Set this to true so that when a plugin updates, it doesn't trash your database. Because when you're cycling over all of these uh, sites, this doesn't scale well, and you will bring down your site. Uh, again, this is for large sites. Again, these are sort of dev things. So if you're deving on multi-site, look into this. There's a codex page on it. More do's. Consider your network and WP admin settings. Really think about this. Think it through and build them out. Uh, it's confusing when all your settings don't make sense. Split these out. Clean up site options on delete, please. If you're going to disable or delete your plugin, clean up whatever you've created, especially on a multi-site network where you're creating those tables or those entries for so many other sites, clean it up. This can be expensive though, so make sure you wrap this in a whole lot of conditional things that I can uh, filter out your actions because I'm gonna delete your stuff for you when I build sites. Clean up custom sites on tables, again, this is a site if you're building tables for whatever reason you're plugging, clean them up if you need to delete the plugin. Consider how licensing works with networks. This is something that, do you wanna allow your plugin to work on a multi-site network? Think about it. Think about how that works with your licensing system. Um, some more do's. Add action network admin menu. This lets you add cool settings to your network to allow you to have custom menus. This is really helpful to help your users navigate around in your multi-site network. Team developers, create child themes. This is what a child theme looks like. Please, please, please use child themes. And theme writers, give your users child themes. Don't make them write them. You write them for them. Consider how licensing works again for those networks. Predev don'ts. Current user can unfiltered HTML. <laughs> unfiltered HTML. I'm not even gonna tell you what this is because you shouldn't use it. Go search your file system for the word unfiltered HTML and kill it with fire. Kill it with fire. If it's a plugin, delete it. If it's a theme, delete it. If it's custom, delete it. Kill it. Do not use unfiltered HTML on a multi-site network. You will regret it. Allows custom post HTML markup and even JavaScript code in pages. Ooh, this sounds fun. Nope. Just don't. Uh, also, don't loop through your network of sites because when you have 200 million sites in your network, uh, you will bring your site down. Uh, unless you know what you're doing, do not loop through your network of sites. Um, you will regret this. All right? How am I doing on time? Mm, about, a minute. about a minute. There's a ton of use cases here, which will sort of walk you through why or why not to use multi-sites. Um, definitely go through those. Again, follow me on Twitter, Taylor4484. These slides are there. Um, I'll be around all day, and I'll answer your questions. So who wants to use a multi-site network now? Have I scared everyone? <laughs> no one raises their hand. That's not the point here. I skew towards worst enemy, but if you know what you're doing and you have the right use case, it can be your best friend. One, one. there we go. <laughs> he knows what he's doing with multi-site networks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you,